Good morning, everyone. How's everybody doing? This is Dr. Carmen Bryant, and this is Car Chronicles. How are you guys doing? You doing all right? Okay, let's do this. So what happens when you grow up in a household with a narcissist parent? Particularly, we're talking about a narcissist mother, right? Um, and the reason why I wanted to address a narcissist mother is because, because women are nurturers by nature. Now, I know you're thinking, well, my mother was not a nurturer because she was an empath. Um, a woman is still created as a nurturer. They're nurturers by nature. And a female or a you know, female narcissist, just like a male narcissist, lacks emotional empathy. And so we know that something that's good, like nurturing, used to nurture our children to sometimes we as women we nurture pain too long we nurture things too long a lot of times but with a female narcissist that nurture nature is turned into a weapon and they use that nurturing nature in order to manipulate people they manip they manipulate they pet you they you know they 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 use that nurturing as a weapon to get what they want they manipulate with that with that weapon now, what some of you may have experienced as male and females alike with that narcissistic mother is the fact that you grew up in a household in which they really had no use of you or nothing that came out of their mouth was positive. You did not receive the nurturing that you needed. You did not receive the, you know, the applaud. Young men or, or, or little boys need the applaud. They need the mother to be the cheerleader. That, you know, Bishop Jakes talked about, you know, the mother's cheer their sons on and when they get older the wives cheer the husbands on that's what the men look for he says that's what they look for the reaction you know and you can see where something that is pure something that is whole is taken and perverted with the narcissist and with a female narcissist instead of helping to cultivate the growth of their children and to teach them how it is to be loved and to give them an example of what it is to be loved by a woman they take that and they pervert that. They take that and some of them even have violated their own children. Some of you guys know, you don't talk about it, but men, some of you have been violated by your own mothers. What they've taken because you are a source of supply. The more children they have, the more supply they're producing for themselves. A narcissist never misses you. They miss what you did for them, meaning you provided them with copious amounts of, of fuel. They, they know that you either gave them a house to live in, you gave them children, you give them status quo, certain friends, there's certain clout, there's certain things, they never come to you or come back because they're in love and they miss you and they realize what they miss now that the well is run dry. Anytime a narcissist hoovers back around or tries to come back to you, they're going to tell you what you want to hear, but it is absolutely nothing to do with you, period. Like the kids say, period. It has absolutely nothing to do with you. It is based on a need. There is a need. I need something or I want something from you. It's a, they're opportunists. And a female narcissist that grows up raising her children or at men especially, you know, first of all, you get the wrong impression of what relationships are or what a woman is because you're looking at your mother as, as the narcissist mother who is abusing, misusing. Everything that comes out of her mouth is negative. Everything that she has to say to you is, is horrific. And so... What ends up happening is, is as you grow, when you're a child, you there, where are you going to go? There is no escape. So you are forced to stay in this toxic environment and you have nowhere to go. Where is there to go as a child? You know, sometimes family members, they're going to portray themselves one way in front of family. So, of course, how is family going to help unless they're aware of, right? And so you're stuck in this environment until you get to an age where you realize I have boundaries and you put up your boundaries. And you choose not to have a relationship with that narcissist. And there's nothing wrong with that. The thing that I hate the most is when people say, blood is thicker than water. Or ask questions, why are we not around family? Why do we make other people family? Blood is thicker than water. That's not actually the same. The blood of the covenant is thicker than the water of the womb. So it's the relationships that you build outside of these toxic relationships. People have the tendency, they need interaction with other people. They need socialization. And so when people grow up and they come out of toxic relationships, most people are always pointing their fingers. That's your mother. That's your father. You know, your mother's old. You know, you're, you need to cultivate a relationship. This is what she wants. No, what happens is, is that narcissist begins to pull on family on their emotions. Remember? 
women are nurturers by nature. And so they play on the emotions of family. And what they do is they recruit flying monkeys. They're recruiting flying monkeys and they're playing with their emotions They're manipulating the emotions and they do a smear campaign. They do a smear campaign by telling people how cruel you are and how you don't want anything to do with them and how you treat them and how you talk to them. The part that they always leave out of the picture is the part of they antagonize you. They've abused you growing up, you know, they, they don't have anything to do with you. You may not even have a connection with them. There is no relationship there. But by the time that they're through painting this picture to these uh, flying monkeys, the flying monkeys go out to do the work for the narcissist mother. And that the narcissist and, and, and this is the hands of the narcissist mother now. So the flying monkeys, you hear your sisters, your brothers, your cousins, your uncles, whoever. Now they're calling you. Why would you do mom like that? Or why would you do granny like that? Or why would you go do grandpa like that? You know, I don't understand. You know, we're supposed to be family. You're supposed to forgive and forget. You just haven't forgiven. And it's still on your heart. And you're just, you know, that's, that's hateful. And you're thinking to yourself, I have forgiven and I love from a distance. Because I'm not going to get in the face of this narcissist and disrespect them. And some of you guys have those good characteristic traits and you're thinking to yourself, I don't want to be around this person because they've wounded me and hurt me all my life. They didn't want anything to do with me. So I made a decision after trying and trying and trying into my adulthood to connect with this person, to try to make my mother or my father love me. I'm always trying to prove myself. I'm always trying to win over their favor. I'm always trying to win them until you get to a point where you get tired. And when you get tired and you realize this is pointless and you begin to realize what they are and you realize this is pointless, why am I running behind someone that does not want to cultivate a relationship with me? Immediately when you stop running behind them because you were giving them fuel and immediately when you stop running behind them, they begin that, that smear campaign and the smear campaign, the goal of it is to get you back into compliance, get you running behind them again. And then they've recruited people into their little army of narcissistic cycles. They've recruited family and friends uh, neighbors and dogs and cats you know and emotionally manipulated them and how cruel you are how mean you are and you don't want anything to do with me and you won't even call they don't even check on me and you know I'm sickly and and you know and and all this just to manipulate people's emotions and guess what you get phone calls and the phone calls are why would you do them like that you know that they're getting older you know mom's getting older you know granny's getting older you know why would you treat her like that she just wants some attention she's done some things in her life that she's not proud of you know and you just have to forgive you just haven't forgiven and you're bitter no to forgive does not mean you have to go back and recultivate the relationship to forgive does not mean that i have to be in your presence to forgive does not mean i even have to be in in the vicinity as you are. I love you from a distance so that I can avoid uh, re uh, uh, re disrespecting you. And some people have taken that stance. Don't move because people have said something to you. Don't change. What, what purpose does it serve for you to keep going back and to keep being abused and misused? And then on top of that, you know in your heart that you don't have a relationship with this person. So you're almost appalled at the fact that they would even make these accusations or talk to people about it. Now, you got to be careful. Because there are people that are codependent. There are people that are people pleasers. Some of you have come and, and, and this is what has developed. You become people pleasers. You have become codependent. And so you have this constant fear of people rejecting you or abandoning you or you fear failure. And so you constantly are trying to explain yourself. And you're trying to go and you're running around in a circle chasing your own tail because you're trying to explain yourself that this is not true and you don't want people to look at you a certain way. First of all, you have to get rid of that. Get rid of that. You got to understand what you're dealing with. And you don't have to explain anything to no one deserves an answer. You don't have to answer anything. You know, you're accountable to your husband, you're accountable to your children, you know, but you don't owe anybody an explanation as to why you cut someone off. Because if not, you're right back in the same cycle you were in with that narcissist. You don't owe anybody an explanation. Those are called boundaries. And when you set boundaries, set boundaries to protect yourself, it does not require an explanation as to why you set the boundaries. No means no. I don't owe you an explanation why I said no. Yeah, well, you know, the reason why I said no, and you know, it's not to hurt your feelings. I don't care whether it hurts your feelings or not. Now, I'm not being rude. You don't have to be rude. It, it doesn't matter whether it hurts your feelings because people that lack boundaries, their feelings are always hurt. I can't believe you're doing this. I feel like you're killing me, and I don't understand why you said no, and you're not explaining anything, so I'm lost, and you're supposed to care about me. Okay, you need to take those emotions somewhere else because my no means no. And that's what you have to practice because a narcissist is a narcissist is a narcissist that lacks boundary. And when you say no, they have temper tantrum like little kids. Cut them off and be fine with that. 
and heal from that. The longer you are away from them, the more you begin to heal and set up your boundaries.